Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mytho Religio. Mytho Religio is a series of books about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mytho Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I am not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this book series, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories, such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source. And all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story. The true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number 1 and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. For deeper analysis that I cannot share in this platform due to its sensitive nature that leads to the above conclusion, kindly read the books that are available in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythoreligio.com or the physical books at Amazon in color or black and white version. Timeline of Evolution Part 2 Dear fellow truth seekers, in my last video, I have shared with you the first part of Timeline of Evolution for our science versus religious study. In that video, I have covered the Hadean and Archean Aeon that is from the formation of the Earth where there was no oxygen yet until the Great Oxidation event that took place when cyanobacteria or blue-green bacteria began pumping out oxygen in the atmosphere due to the photosynthesis process. Now I will continue with the next eon, that is the 3. Proterozoic eon 2.5 billion years ago to 542 million years ago. Protero means former and zoic means life in Greek. So, Proterozoic means former life. Before the appearance of oxygen on the Earth's atmosphere, only single-cell unicellular organism such as or similar as prokaryotes exist in the Earth. After the Great Oxidation event, more complex organisms began to appear. 2.1 billion years ago, eukaryotes are complex cells. More complex cells appear, the eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are cells that contain cell nucleus or central and organelles or organs. One billion years ago, multicellular life. Unicellular organisms became multicellular organisms. This is a huge evolutionary step and is consequently under great debate. However, unlike some other huge steps in evolution, multicellularity is thought to have evolved many times independently. Plants, animals, and fungi had independent evolution path. 600 million years ago, simple animals. 
It is thought that the earliest multicellular animal was a sponge-like creature. Sponges are among the simplest of animals with partially differentiated tissues. 580 million years ago, Cnidarians. The earliest known fossils of Cnidarians, the group that includes jellyfish, sea anemones, sea plants with brightly colored flowers, and corals, are dated to around this time, though the fossil evidence has been disputed. 570 million years ago, arthropods. Arthropods are invertebrate animal, animal without skeletal structure, having an exoskeleton, external skeleton, a segmented body, and jointed appendages, external body parts including antenna, legs, sexual organs, and tails. Arthropods are the ancestors of insects, arachnids or spiders, and crustaceans. Now we arrive at the last eon, that is the 4. Phanerozoic Eon, 542 million years ago to the present. In ancient Greek, Phaneros means visible and Zoic means life. Phanerozoic means visible life. Phanerozoic Eon is divided into three eras, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. Paleo means old, Miso means middle, and Sino means new. In this video, I'm only going to cover the Paleozoic era or old life. This era is further divided into six periods, and the first period is called Cambrian. Phanerozoic or visible life is called that way since it was once believed that life began in the Cambrian period. The Cambrian period, also known as the Cambrian Explosion, was an event at circa 530 million years ago when practically all major animal phyla, Greek meaning tribe, started appearing in the fossil record. The period gets its name from Cambria, the Roman name for Wales, where Adam Sedgwick, one of the pioneers of geology, studied rock strata. So let's continue with the timeline. 530 million years ago, Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian Explosion was the apparently rapid appearance of most major groups of complex animals, as shown by the fossil record. This was accompanied by a major diversification of other organisms. Over the following 70 or 80 million years, the rate of evolution accelerated by an order of magnitude and the diversity of life began to resemble today's. 500 million years ago, fish. A fish is any aquatic vertebrate animal that is covered with scales and equipped with two sets of paired fins and several unpaired fins. The earliest fish was believed to be of Agnata class. Agnata means without a jaw. They have mouth, but they can't open or close them. An example is the lamprey. 475 million years ago, land plants. The embryophytes are the most familiar group of plants. They are often called land plants because they live primarily in terrestrial habitats, in contrast with the related green algae that are primarily aquatic. The embryophytes include trees, ferns, mosses, and various other green land plants. 460 million years ago, fish division. Fish split into two major groups, the bony fish and cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish have skeletons of cartilage, a firm, whitish, flexible connective tissue instead of bones as in most modern fish. Example of cartilaginous fish are sharks and rays. 425 million years ago, colicum. The Coelacanth is one of the most famous living fossil species that has apparently not changed for millions of years. Coelacanth were once considered, until 1938, as the missing link between the fish and the tetrapods, or four-legged animals. 
417 million years ago, lungfish. Lungfish is a fish that has both gills and lungs. Lungfish has a pair of relatively sophisticated lungs which are divided into numerous smaller air sacs to increase their surface area. This allows it to breathe out of water and thus to survive when the ponds it lives in dry out. 400 million years ago, insects. Insects are a class within the arthropods that have three part body, head, thorax, and abdomen, three pairs of jointed legs, compound eyes, and two antennae. They are among the most diverse group of animals on the planet and include more than one million described species and represent more than half of all known living organisms. The life cycles of insects vary, but most hatched from eggs. The evolutionary relationships of insects to other animal groups remain unclear. 375 million years ago, Tiktaalik. Tiktaalik is an intermediate between fish and land tetrapods, four-legged animals. The fleshy fins of its lungfish ancestors are evolving into limbs which led into the evolution of amphibians. Amphibians means that they can live in water or on land. The first tetrapods probably evolved from intermediate species such as Tiktaalik. Then the tetrapods go on to conquer the land and give rise to all amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. 315 million years ago, amphibians. The first major split occurs in the tetrapods, with the amphibians branching off from the others. Acanthostega is an extinct amphibian, among the first animal to have recognizable limbs, making it probably one of the first vertebrates that is able of coming onto land. It had both lungs and gills. Ichthyostegas are believed to be an early tetrapod being one of the first animals with legs, arms, and finger bones. They are seen as a hybrid between a fish and an amphibian. They had legs, but their limbs probably weren't used for walking. They may have spent very brief periods out of water and would have used their legs to paw their way through the mud. 300 million years ago, reptiles. Hylonomus are the earliest known reptile. They probably would have looked rather similar to modern lizards. They are the precursors of later amniotes and mammal-like reptiles. The amniotes are a group of tetrapod vertebrates that have a terrestrially adapted egg. 310 million years ago, sauropsids and synapsids. The tetrapods consist of amphibians, sauropsids, and synapsids. Sauropsids come from Greek sauros meaning reptile or lizard, and ops meaning face. So sauropsids means lizard face. And synapsids come from syn, a superlative, and hapsis meaning arch. Synapsids pertains to animals which have an opening low in the skull roof behind each eye, leaving a bony arch beneath each, making them look mammal-like. Within the remaining tetrapods and syrapsids and synapsids split from one another. The sauropsids include all the modern reptiles plus the dinosaurs and birds. The first synapsids are also reptiles, but have distinctive jaws as well as the bony arch. They are sometimes called mammal-like reptiles and eventually evolved into mammals. This is the end of the Paleozoic or Old Life Era, and let me stop the second part of the timeline here, or else it will be too many scientific names to retain. Next week, I will continue with the next era that is the Mesozoic or the Middle Life the time when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. For now, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.